minorities and of course women. That brings us to skill development. As uh, Vibhaji was saying, we have one of the lowest proportion in the world uh, of our youth taking vocational education. The number that she gave are a little dated, but still they are eye-opener. As far as the, our Indian education system is concerned, only 2% of our youth, uh, this is the data for 2006-2007, uh, the latest data would be available in next few months, but only 2% of our youth have access to formal vocational education and another 8% have access to on-the-job training, the training at the workplace and so on. That means together formal and informal vocational education is available to only about 10% of our youth which is grossly inadequate. Just compare that with a country like South Korea. In South Korea, this proportion is about 93%. In all Western countries, it is in the range of 65 to 75 or even 80% and we are stuck at 10%. This does not augur well for a country which is hoping to sustain the high growth rate which is envisaged in the 12-5 year plan. In fact, there was a lot of talk about the demographic dividend. It was mentioned by both uh, Vibhapuri Das as well as Salil Bhandari, you know, while we talk about demographic dividend, it is clearly understood, it is clearly understood that if we don't put our education sector and skill development sector in order, the, all this talk about demographic dividend will turn into a demographic nightmare because this is a fortuitous opportunity that demographic dividend is a fortuitous opportunity that we have but there is nothing automatic about that. That cannot by itself translate into higher rate of economic growth unless we bring about major reforms in the education system, unless we bring very important, thoroughgoing, fundamental reforms in our skill development sector. Unless we do that, unless we put the education and skill development sector in order, there is no way we can sustain the high rate of growth that we are envisaging. And what would happen is that if we do not put our education sector, skill development sector in order, what is going to happen is that we will be adding mouths to feed, but not the hands that can work. And that would mean that demographic dividend will turn into demographic disaster. And to avoid that, we have to look at, uh, we have to look at reforms in education sector at all levels, including, of course, higher education sector, as well as in the skill development sector. In the skill development sector, I believe that there is a very important need for establishing flexible learning pathways with horizontal as well as vertical mobility in vocational education. And this is going to be order of the, you know, this is going to be of, of great greatest importance because we have not only very limited access to vocational education, but today there is no horizontal mobility, nor there is a vertical mobility uh, which is there in all advanced economies. And we need to bring that kind of horizontal uh, movement as well as vertical movement, and that would require a lot of in investment. Uh, this can be done through the national vocational education uh, framework. The task of curricular reform may have to be uh, left to the active engagement of the sector skill councils which are being established. Uh, Vibha did mention the massive skill development initiative that has been launched. The Honorable Prime Minister has given us a target that by the year 2022, we shall skill about 500 million people. Now, this is a huge, formidable kind of target. And to achieve that, we have to put our act, to, act, act together. At the national level, we have National Skill Development Mission. We have a National Skill Development Coordination Board. You know, because there are 17 ministries, including the Ministry of uh, Human Resource Development, that is involved in engaging, that is engaged in skill development. But the part, you know, the coordination between these seven, 17 ministries uh, leaves much to be desired. You know, when we talk about PPP, we always meant uh, public-private partnership. But I can tell you, as an insider, that PPP in our context, present context, should also mean public-public partnership because there isn't any. When there are 17 ministries which are engaged in skill development, the coordination between them leaves much to be desired. And that's why Prime Minister has established uh, Skill Development Coordinate, National Skill Development Coordination Board, where 17 ministries are brought together, and that is chaired by Montek Singh Alwalia, and I'm part of uh, this this council, which is doing, uh, which is beginning, which has begun to do a lot of good work. Then there is at the national level, we also have 
uh, a PPP, public private partnership kind of initiative in terms of national skill development corporation that has also started doing very, very good work. While this is done, this uh, three tier structure is there at the central government level or at the central level, uh, at the state level, each state has been uh, told to have their own state level skill development mission. And I'm very happy to report that as of today, all the states in India and all the union territories have established their state level or uh, the, the administrative level of skill, uh, skill development mission and the work is gaining momentum and this process will have to be strengthened considerably in the 12th five year plan. That would be an opportunity. Um, finally, we turn to the uh, higher education about the reach and quality of higher education. We all know that for long term sustenance of high growth rate of Indian economy, GER, the gross enrollment ratio uh, in a higher and technical education would have to be substantially increased. Uh, the target for GER, the gross enrollment ratio in higher and technical education in India, the target for the 11th plan was 15% and we are somewhere close to achieving that. Uh, Vibhaji mentioned the number of 13.5%. We are close to achieving the 15% target and we are now talking about the future target. Uh, when our GER was only 12.8%, that is three years ago, at that time, how did it compare with the rest of the world? The average for the world at that time was 24%. Average for the world. If you take the average for advanced economies, the average is 68%. Even if you take the average for developing countries, that is still 18%. So at 12%, we were two-thirds of even the average for developing countries. And it was one-fifth of the average for the advanced economies, which again goes to show that we have a very long way to go. We are right now debating on what should be the target. And in the 12th plan, we will arrive at the target. The Honorable Minister of Human Resource Development has talked about the numbers in terms of 25% uh, in the next few years and 30% over a decade or so. These numbers would be finalized the, uh, when the National Development Council takes a final view on that as a part of our proposal for the 12 5 year plan. Um, and there are not only, not only uh, our GR is very low, this is the aggregate GR we are talking about, but there are very serious problems about the social gap, the gender gaps, and even the regional gaps. You'll be surprised that eight states in our country account for 70% of the total number of universities and colleges. So 70% of our educational, higher educational institutions are concentrated in eight states. So the regional disparity is appalling. Even more appalling is the social disparity. You know, as I, when our gross enrollment ratio was only 12.8%, that is in the year 2007, 2008, uh, if you break it down between rural and urban, male and female, rich and poor, Scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and others, or minorities, uh, Muslims, and uh, or other minorities, and the general population. It is appalling. You would be shocked to find that going by the 2007-2008 numbers, in in the among the scheduled tribes and the scheduled tribe female in the rural area, the gross enrollment ratio was less than two percent. I think we should all hang our head in shame that at this time and age. We have large strata of society where 98% of the population do not have even mere access to higher education. This goes to show the kind of challenge that uh, we would have to face. The quality of higher education is also a vitally important matter. A discomfortingly large number of colleges, state and private universities are of low to medium quality. And as uh, Vibhaji quoted uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, we are talking about a few centers of excellence uh, in an island of uh, mediocrity. Uh, this is the argument that is often made. We really have to have a long way to go. Um, since the colleges and state universities constitute the bulk of our higher education, which is often not recognized, the bulk of our higher education uh, is really in the state universities, which are least talked about and mostly ignored in terms of funding in particular. And, you know, because they are the ones who are never in the news. Uh, they are the ones which require massive improvement because, and massive funding, of course, uh, that is because they are the ones who are really the mainstay of higher education in our country. Uh, and this will require massive central support. 
Significant improvements in the gross enrollment ratio with better access and improved quality can perhaps be achieved in a cost-effective manner if the existing colleges and state universities, including the old and reputed ones, are strengthened and expanded. And that is going to be, uh, certainly, I certainly hope that that would be one of the focus areas of the 12-5 year plan. Um, excellence in the higher education and university system cannot be achieved unless research and teaching progress together. And this is where what uh, what uh, she uh, uh, what uh, she uh, madam made a reference to is very important you know uh, there are the, 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 the rough and ready kind of data back up the envelope calculations show that until the year 1994 the research coming out of the indian and chinese universities were was of the same order today while a lot of people believe that we have much larger number of people who can speak english fact of the matter is that the research coming out of the chinese institutions is about five times larger than the research that is coming out of the Indian education system. So research is going to be or should must be a very, very important priority. Here the particular attention would have to be paid to the advancement of knowledge through research. Unfortunately, the research seems to have taken a back seat in the Indian university system. Unlike in the past, state university, state university system is no longer the cradle of scientific research and innovation. How to reverse this trend and establish mutually reinforcing linkages between teaching and research is an issue that is going to merit attention in the 12-5 year plan. Related to this is the issue of faculty shortages, which can possibly tackle through innovative ways such as technology-enabled learning and collaborative information and communication technologies. A complete overhaul of academic staff colleges is something, again, very urgently and eminently required. Administrative staff college are supposed to train the trainers, they teach the teachers, and discomfortingly large number of teachers, particularly in the state universities, are blissfully unaware of the recent advances in their own subject. So, up to making updating their knowledge base has a multi, has a multiplier, positive multiplier. If all the uh, reform measures which are currently underway are implemented fully in letter and spirit, it is going to change the higher education sector uh, completely. Uh, uh, what would be crucial would be mobilization of formidable funding requirements from both government as well as private sources, and it would remain a challenge that would have to be addressed. The potential of new information and communication technologies for expanding the reach of higher education by extending and diversifying the delivery and making the knowledge and information widely available would have to be better utilized. And she did make a reference to that. One of the models that uh, we need to look at, uh, and uh, Professor Pillai will have something to say on that, a convergence model. You know, uh, the ICT would have a long reach in terms of distance education, but in the in the future, we may need to look at Scalability was what Vibhav was talking about. For achieving the scalability in the shortest possible time, uh, we will have to think in terms of a convergence model where there is a traditional and distance education format are combined in an innovative manner. Uh, the 12th plan, the 11th plan had envisaged setting up of world-class universities currently under consideration as universities for innovation. This is something which will be required. Uh, but one feeling that is coming again and again is that rather than creating a de novo institutions by, and terming them as innovation universities, it would perhaps be preferable to convert or upgrade a few of the universities and institutions uh, as a collaborative mode of establishing innovation universities. It would also be an opportunity for recognizing institutions of excellence within our existing system and turn them into world-class institutions. Finally, about facilitating private institutions, including the PPP in uh, education, particularly higher education, uh, let me say that while higher education continues to remain a public good, a public service, resource limitations are a reality and hence diversified sources of funding, including through private sector, would have to come and would have become, uh, have become inevitable today. Identification of viable PPP models for education sector so as to attract private investment for enhancing quality of education services is now well recognized and we are going to move in that direction. One of the contentious issues there, and this is, is being debated and will be debated in the 12-5 year plan, is uh, the not-for-profit tag in the education sector. There is a view that we probably